Yum. Perfect. And I'll call the Amherst School Committee to order at 6.41 p.m. and let everyone, you need to press the button on your mic, except for Sarah Bess, so that the light turns on. So I do have a couple updates for being in here. One is exactly that. Um, so your microphones all have a button in the front that you have to press. When the green light is on, you are, the, your mic is hot. Okay. Uh, so... I actually first just want to say thank you so much to the town of Amherst and Sean for working with us to coordinate and getting everything so set up and running and Dave from Amherst Media because he was super helpful in all this too. Um, okay, so our first order of business is our superintendent's goals for the 24-25 school year. Do you want to... It's going to come up. Oh, and I pushed the button. You have to hold the button here. Just use mine while you're doing your thing. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for such a wonderful opportunity. I did take the feedback from our last session and um, went back and met with my district team, the, S the planning council, SBC, and we reviewed the goals and strategies. Um, everyone was able to give input into how they think that the goals could tweak and change based on what they do. Um, afterward, <laughs> what I did was I went back over it and I kept hearing Anna and Jennifer's and everyone's, <laughs> you know, uh, repeat like, this seems like a lot. This seems and some things we should shift to year two. Um, so I did look at them and I said, well, maybe there can be consistent strategies, but there's strategies that we need to move from year one to year two. Um, there are things that need to be developed and how can I make it realistic? Um, I did go through and once that was changed, I did send it to McPherson Jacobson, um, to Dr. Freenan and Dr. Ferry. Um, they emailed me back and they said, the goals look good. We had a quick um, call last night at 7 p.m. And they said, everything looks great. It looks realistic and achievable. And so right after that, I immediately sent it to the chairs to be shared. So I just wanted to walk through. Um, I don't know if if you just want to ask questions, um, how you want to do this. It's basically the same, but the strategies were reduced. Yeah, PowerPoint 90. Sarah? Thank you, Dr. Z. Um, I'm I'm thinking from the end of the process because we just finished evaluating our seems like just a couple of weeks ago our interim superintendent. So I'm thinking about the assessment that I I will need to do and and Amherst school committee members need to evaluate you twice, once in terms of how you've met the goals with respect to the <clears throat> excuse me the region the middle and the high school, but then also with respect to the Amherst Elementary District. So I'm curious about how you think we can distinguish these goals and these strategies in terms of elementary versus um, region, secondary, or will you simp or will you perhaps just present different artifacts uh, that cover those two different districts? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. How the goals are written um, and how I've decided to approach this, this position that's quite intricate because I serve um, three different districts is that realistically, these goals are overarching to the point where the same steps have to be done in each district. Um, there needs to be a curricular review in Pelham. There needs to be a curricular review across Amherst and looking at the K-6 lens, what are we doing in terms of meeting our standards and our goals set forth? Um, how do we plan to move forward and reform? The same thing then needs to be done in terms of middle school and high school alignment. And so I do plan to have um, artifacts that show the work K-12, and it should show also the work in terms of what was done in Pelham, what was done in Amherst, and what was done at the region. Yeah. 
there any further questions that we need to talk about? Sarah? <laughs> This isn't a question about the goals so much as some of the um, uh, administrative positions and offices you mentioned that I, th I think are new or maybe new to me. And I just, you don't have to explain them what everything is tonight, but I'd love to hear about how you've been um, reshaping the central office. Um, so for example, there's uh, communications and climate or something like that. And there, there, there are a variety of offices. Um, so I would just ask that at some point you tell us what all those are and who's who's in the office. Sure, sure thing. Um, I think that as the work, just to understand the positioning, as I go through and I audit each of the divisions, what and even working in a district, one of the first critical things that I noticed that was missing is a person to handle communications and tell our own narrative and story. Um, we advertised before, it wasn't successful. So we advertise again. We have now Seth Kiventhal on staff as our um, media and climate specialist. And so what he has been doing in his short two weeks has really helped to shift what's, what's moving in terms of communicating. I think he's already drafted two to three press releases, four. Thank you, Giseth. Four press releases. Um, he has done numerous parent square updates. He's logged in and reset our Facebook page so that now we have our active Facebook. He's also working to update our threads. So again, any school district, and when we think about how we are losing students to school choice and other areas, we have to think of what narrative and story is being told about our district and how do we get our stories out. And so as great as I think I am and as, as talented as my executive assistant and team is, we also don't specialize in building that footprint, that communication footprint, that footprint of being timely in getting information released today within a matter of hours, Seth was able to craft a very critical release that went out to all parents. Um, and even I think to members here, uh, sorry, Margaret, <laughs> but we'll work on that. And so um, making sure that information moves timely. So as I complete my entry and take this time to go through, there are critical positions that are missing. And with the budget cut, um, we are being very creative. And so one of the key things that I'm going to say to the boards, um, the committees, sorry, to the committees, is that some of the skills that are needed, we may have in-house, right? However, instead of just switching positions, I am advertising the positions. Um, and so in a way to say, the individuals who I may identify as having the skills, I may find someone stronger, um, what does that mean? I'm not sure, but we are looking at, even looking at renaming and restructuring how divisions work. We're looking at renaming and restructuring where positions sit and where they lie, looking at individual strengths and saying, this is your strength, this is your background, this is a gap that we need to fill. Can we now align duties and responsibilities where we are actually um, creating like a, a zero cost but we're shifting the work that's there. But then we're also creating a sense of transparency where everyone knows the position shifts that are going to be made. So I would come back and, and create and, put, and present that, but I wanted everyone to understand the method to the, I won't say madness, but madness, because there are some gaps. Um, we need a compliance officer, but we still need somebody to support administratively. We do need someone to assist with investigations and, and things in human resources, but then we also need someone to come in and support other areas when it comes to, and there's so many things in, in that we need to do. So, so we've been looking at the current vacancies that we have that are budgeted and how do we take them and recreate them and shape them in a way that meets our needs without causing us additional deficit. Any further questions? Okay. Just a quick follow up. Mm -hmm. Just a quick follow up on um, Sarah Marshall's question. In there, I saw the Office of Teaching and Learning. Yeah. Um, could you just tell us a little about that? 
because that's not uh, like a uh, division I, I've heard of before. So teaching and learning actually is curriculum and instruction, um, but there are multiple facets. There's a Title I coordinator, there's our curriculum and instruction administrator. Um, and so that that's really what I would call teaching and learning. Um, I don't just call it curriculum and instruction because it, it goes beyond that. It talks about instructional practices as well. You're welcome. Eric? Dr. Z, I, in viewing these, <clears throat> three things came to mind. That they're really inspiring goals. They're also aspirational and also incredibly appropriate for where we are at this time in terms of the region. So I really applaud you on taking this on, doing what you are doing, entering the way you're entering in an incredibly professional way. Uh, <clears throat> as a student of organizational development, I am really in awe of how you have come in and taken charge of the organization and did a diagnosis of it in such a way that you were able to come up with these goals, which are entirely in line with what, what is needed. And I thank you for it. Thank you for that. No, are, are we, what's the process here for this part of the agenda? Are we gonna go through the goals? Or are we talking ahead of time? Uh, <clears throat> so, do you want to go through each goal? Do you have questions? No, I, I, I was just wondering if that was the plan. I'm not asking to do that. Oh, okay. Uh, I think Dr. Z offered whichever way we wanted to go through, and it seemed like the consensus was just ask questions, should we have some. Are there any further questions? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I also appreciate uh, that you took some feedback. Unfortunately, last meeting. I didn't have access to the goals. I'm not sure when they went on the agenda. So this one was my first time through it. I didn't have opportunity to give you feedback uh, two weeks ago. And while I appreciate the extensiveness of it and the fact that you've taken input from um, people who were saying, you know, slow down, um, I'm having trouble finding the districts that I have come to know over the past eight months. I've just been on the committee for eight months, but um, you know the issues that have come up, I think will be addressed in a comprehensive plan like yours. But I was looking or maybe hoping or expecting to be, have it be more triage this, this first year. You know, our infrastructure issues at the, um, at the region, uh, certainly the world language program and how we're, if there's going to be any development on that, especially, and then going over to the Amherst side with the sixth grade moving over, whether or not there's going to be an extension of Caminantes there, um, what will those advanced learners experience at the middle school? Um, so those are the two big ones well, of course, you know, then having sat on the Title IX um, subcommittee, uh, we, we had done some work in our own evaluation and made a recommendation for a program. And I was looking for some feedback on, on your thoughts on that. So then in terms of the work we did, and I know you weren't part of the district at that point, uh, for policy, we had... Um, a couple of policies we worked on. Um, there was the development of the new anti-bullying plan, um, the development of somewhat of a difficult Student Opportunities Act program that we were really looking for some more depth from the previous superintendent in, 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 in addressing our needs. So those are the kinds of things that I think you would uncover in such a comprehensive plan. But you know the specifics of, of the issues that have come up over the last year, um, absenteeism is a big one for me. Um, time on learning with the new, uh, not the new, relatively new uh, block schedule, uh, 
some really significant um, mental health, social, emotional, and learning losses coming back from COVID. All of those things were things that I've seen developed over the past eight months. And I, I, I guess I have a hard time seeing those rise out of this such a, a deep and broad plan. Um, I guess the last part that I was, well, the super, uh, the bullying, anti-bullying and harassment plan that we worked on was was really an important issue that we we grappled with over the past um, eight months. And there was one more. Um, uh, retention of staff of color and reductions. Oh, and then of course the big one is going out, going into the um, going in to planning for the fiscal year with a uh, with a new contract being negotiated with our with one of our unions, the the teacher clerical para union, and the budget challenges we're going to be facing going into fiscal year twenty six. So, um, with, with a fair amount of expect parts that that we have a, a well-developed plan uh, relatively on short order. So I know that was a lot, but. I don't wear an S on my chest because the Xiomara is actually an X. So it's Z, it's your Xiomara. So I'm not superwoman there, but I think so. And I play so for, for TV. Um, <laughs> and I say that because you listed about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things that I think is encompassed within it, within the goals. And the one thing I wanted to, and I think this goes back to Sarah Marshall's question around seeing the different districts within what's in the goals and strategies. We are one team that serves three districts. And we have to be able to, I needed to put forth something that is realistic in achieving that also speaks to the different areas that you just spoke to. So for example, the infrastructure. On the first, under goal one, strategy three, it says I will collaborate with facilities and transportation department to conduct safety audits and updates to facility maintenance and transportation protocols informed by data analysis, feedback from staff, students and families. So a lot of the language that you may be looking for something specific is actually built into the action steps that were, are going to be done. Um, I also feel like there are things that have started prior to me coming on board in July that realistically, I need the opportunity to delve into what is currently happening, to delve into what is our actual fiscal circumstance and structure to, to be able to clearly say if these initiatives that started, if we are in a place to do them the way that they may have been planned or if some of the plans may have had to tweak. And so as I walk through the process with my team, there's a lot of planning that has taken place. There are the anti-bullying and harassment. And that's one of the first things that I think I addressed when I came in and the updates have been presented. Um, and that, that was definitely done true the mental health and behavioral services with the appointment of Maureen Fleming as a director. She did that, she presented it to the, um, the policy subcommittee, worked with them so there's a, a, a common language. So a lot of the steps that you're looking for, I think would be found in the artifacts um, because it ties to the work that's actually in the broader category strategy. Um, and what we're actually continuing to do as I learn about the district, but as we also try to build and, and shift and work together is make sure that what we're doing is, is not just for now, but is a sustainable practice. And so a lot of things that were put in place served as band-aids and they cover up and it sounded really great, but is it sustainable? Um, talking about the Caminantes program, I've been in different conversations, I've looked at different things, but I also need to look at what are, what are our curricular gaps? What's the scheduling gaps? Mm -hmm. And so that's where that deep audit of teaching and learning, what's happening during the day, that's an audit of instructional time. 
that's us walking through the school, meeting with principals, giving instructional feedback, and providing an outline of this is an instructional day. Does this schedule actually work? I'm not only going to look at the black schedule at the high school and the middle school. I'm also going to look at the use of time in the elementary school and does it meet the gap that our data says that our students need. But I have to audit and go through with the team and adequately speak to that. There's been a lot of curriculum work that, um, and she's in the back of the room, Mary Kylie has started. We just adopted a new writing program that's about to launch. I'm walking into that. That needs an opportunity to be, to have proper training, to be vetted, for everything to take root and to see how it works. So honestly, I would not have put specifically these items there as things that in, in a year you're going to look for, because in a year, things have changed within months of me being in the seats. And so the, the, the way how I wanted to present it was a way that it allows my team and I to truly develop, a, first of all, a clear district plan, a clear SOA for DESE that says, this is where we're going from where we are. Because that's not in place. I don't think that's been in place since 20, 2018. And so we're asking for things that sounds sound really great. Outside of student, absenteeism is an issue, not just student, I'm, I'm monitoring all absenteeism, but we also don't have a functional dashboard in place for us as, as district leaders or even building leaders to monitor their own attendance. They, they depend on the central office. So I need to build a culture of, of tracking data before I start to say, hey leaders, what's your absenteeism data? And that's why I'm having data chats. With the, with the schools in about two weeks, where they're going to start to have and build those data conversations. So there's some practices that have to be in place for me to meet what you are expecting to see. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. See, that answer just reminded me a question about the first goal, develop and present a district improvement plan. Do you mean... Do you mean three district improvement plans? Do you mean, again, one for the elementary, Amherst Elementary, one for Pelham Elementary, and one for the region? Right, but for us, it would be one comprehensive plan that's split in uh, Pelham, Amherst, and region. So when we pick it up, we're picking up from our lens, one book that we're working from, but we're split into sections. But it doesn't address all the schools. Yes. Thank you. The last line of that goal says, um, the plan will include recommendations for restructuring our administrative framework to ensure effective leadership that promotes equity and inclusivity in teaching and learning practices and drives improved district efficiencies and student outcomes across all three districts. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I, I'm assuming that we are either going to approve these uh, goals as presented, or we're going to make some additions to them. One way or another, I was thinking that at the end of this discussion, the school committee would vote to approve these as goals for the superintendent without obviously us voting on them and just leaving it. And then we leave it until the end, until May or June, when we actually do the evaluation, that all of those questions uh, could come up, A and B, uh, there would be a question, that, at least in my mind, whether or not we as a school committee took a vote to approve these. I'm sorry, can you clarify for me? You are saying we should not vote on these? I'm saying that we should vote. Oh, yes. Yes. Because I didn't see anything in here that said there was going to be a vote. That's why I'm ask, asking the question. Oh, okay. Uh, I think as this is our second read of, uh, I, is this the second read for y'all? Not for Pelham. Not for Pelham. Uh, so I think if it's the second read, we can vote on them. That's how it is for policies. Uh, can I read them twice? I actually read them twice for each committee. I don't think so. Now that that that's just policies. I I'm sorry. 
Um, so I think if we are ready and feel comfortable voting on them, we can absolutely vote on them tonight. If that is not a committee's feeling, then we can pause and do that next time. But Dr. Z has requested that we um, approve the her goals in September so that her team can build their goals and they can have the full year to work and address on them. Uh, Jennifer? I move that the Regional School Committee approve the superintendent's goals as presented on September 10th. Okay, any further discussion? I had another question. Go ahead. In terms of the artifacts that, when when do they get presented, the artifacts? We find out what the artifacts are that are used to evaluate this at the end of the at the end of the cycle in May. Okay, and then in terms of developing curriculum, um, can you explain a little bit about what that process looks like? I know the evaluation and analysis, but there's a curriculum development part in it as well. So in there, this year does not have. Um, a curriculum development, what it has is standards alignment. Um, if you look in the first section, it talks about the uh, it auditing it and looking at our instructional units um, to make sure they're standards-based, rigorous, and aligned with DESE expectations. Um, what we're going to go through and do is look at our curriculum and instructional practices and our assessment methods across the three districts. Um, it has been some time since there have been curricular adoptions. Um, right now, there's work that was done in terms of K-2 reading. Um, we're looking at expanding that across, but we need to go through and look. Um, actually, it's and K-6 math. Mary, am I right? Yes, K-6 math, but we need to look at what's happening in 7, 8, and in the high schools. So this year really is to, to analyze, to go through, to vet, to determine. Um, that also includes grading policies, our grading scale, what was happening in terms of, of all of those things. And so in terms of the artifacts, what I was thinking was a lot of that work as well as our, our drafts and things that would come out of it would be attached as proof and evidence of what occurred. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Anna. So um, I think it's great that you're aligning the curriculum from K through six with the middle school and high school. Um, but there are also two other towns that are separate elementary schools. And I was just wondering if you're reaching out to those elementary schools to sort of see what their curriculum looks like and how it aligns with Amherst curriculum and whether there's any possibility of coordinating a little bit so that everybody's on the same page in middle school. I don't just, just to put that out there, I'm not asking you to change anything in your goals. I'm just saying there are two other towns and just to not forget that they will join the middle school. The good part is is one superintendent. So I can reach out to her and have that conversation between teams. Great. Okay. For the region, uh, it was moved to approve the goals as presented on September 10th, correct? Okay. All in favor of uh, approving the goals as presented tonight for the region. One, two, three, four. Your goals are approved for the region. Friend? <laughs> um, I move that we adopt the goals as presented on September 10th for the Pelham School Committee. I second. All those in favor? Thank you. I move that Amherst School Committee approve the uh, super, superintendent's goals as presented on September 10th. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any more discussion? Then let's vote. All in favor, please raise your hands. It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, next up is uh, ooh, uh, policies, policies, JICFB, anti-bullying, and JICFC, harassment of students. Would the policy subcommittee like to take this from here? 
we um, met as a team and looked over our policies and took into consideration the comments that we had. And then we have rewritten them and have presented them again. This time they're clean. And so there's not the other edits that we took out. So it's easier to read and understand the flow. Do you have any questions? I'm just wondering, William, in the end, did you put in a, um, a timeline, like a, um, a firm timeline for bullying reports? Yes. We, um, the policy team also met with um, Dr. Z's um, team. And so we were able to align the policies with the handbook. Um, and they were actually more stringent and closer of a timeline than what we had presented earlier. So now the timelines have been narrowed down more than what we had originally presented. Great. Sarah? So Amherst reviewed these a couple weeks ago and we made some comments and I just don't know if those have made it back to you or I should restate them. No, they haven't. All right. So if you just want to share those with me, you can, or you can share them now, whatever you, whatever it's easy. I, I assume you would like us to vote on them today. So these are minor. <laughs> Please. Okay. So for the anti-bullying um, policy, I would suggest that you define caregivers because that's new language replacing um, parents and guardians, I think. I don't remember where I saw it, but I did see it. And so especially, um, I, I don't know if we're going to use that language throughout all our policies or why there is a change. I'm happy to have it, but because I think it is a new term and policy that we should say. I think it? we're just trying to be more inclusive. Right. But it can be so expansive that if you like, who do you <laughs> include? You're not talking about somebody's doctor, presumably. You're talking about the parent, a guardian, maybe a babysitter who picks some. I don't, see, I don't know how large a net this captures. So, so in the, the, the shift to caregiver actually comes through Desi's allow, allowability of the, the caregiver form. There's a caregiver affidavit that schools actually accept. And it allows for an individual who was appointed by the parent, guardian, to take over educational responsibility, medical responsibility of, of, a, of a minor. And so that's an actual affidavit that DESI accepts. And so the caregiver language actually encompasses parent, guardian, or someone who's appointed by the parent and guardian to take that responsibility. I think it would be wonderful. I did not know that. So I think it would be good to define that somewhere. Tillman? Should it be then parents, guardians, and caregivers? Or does caregiver encompass parents and guardians? Caregiver encompasses parents and guardians. Thank you. Did you have other edits, Sarah? Um, yes. Yes, but I think to the anti-bullying, I don't know if you want to proceed to that. So the last page of that under publication and notice Is that right? I may be wrong. Um, I am talking about the harassment of students policy, the August version. Um, the uh, second page, maybe the fifth paragraph from the end that begins retaliation against a student. Uh, there's some missing words or something that you need to just check. <laughs> Rewrite that sentence. Yes, let me check and say, I don't know, sorry. I mean, I would trust you to complete it as, intent, as you intended. That's all I had. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, I'd like to move that we um, 
that we pass the um oh I for the Amherst Regional School Committee, I'd like to move that we pass the um, student harassments of students policy, JICFC, um, written in August 24, um, with the small suggested edits made in tonight's meeting. Second. Uh, any further discussion from the region? All in favor of passing JICFC as written in August with the few minor edits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Excellent. Thank you. Um, since this is first read for Pelham, uh, we will follow up on a second read at our next meeting. Are we going to have a motion for the other policy for the region? Are we? doing one policy at a time. Okay. However you'd like to do it. All right, then I will move for that the Amherst School Committee approve policy JICFB. That's the one we just did. Anti I'm sorry. Okay. JICFC. <laughs> um uh the August draft with the minor amendments mentioned tonight. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Raise your hand. It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. On to JICFB anti bullying policy. Comments, questions? We actually started talking about that policy originally. So we've actually discussed both policies. Perfect. <laughs> if, there's, if there's any more questions or a motion, I don't know. I would move for the region that we pass um, the student anti-bullying policy, JICFB, as written in August. And I believe there were no edits to that one. The caregiver Except definitely. That one, right. Second. Excellent. Any further discussion for the region? All those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Excellent. Thank you. Passes unanimously. All right, I move for that the Amherst School Committee approve policy JICFB, students anti-bullying, as revised in August with one additional correction made tonight. So second. second. Thank you. All in favor? Just raise your hand. Thank you. Unanimous. I just want to say thank you to all the committee members on the policy team for working so hard on these, and I thank everyone of the, all three districts or all two districts, almost three, uh, for passing these. It means a lot. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. So excellent segue onto our next topic of uh, policy subcommittee. Um, so it, I have it listed as memberships and appointments. Uh, I didn't really know how else to define it. Uh, there's been conversation about creating some sort of joint subcommittee between the three uh, committees so they can all work on policy together as our policies are often all very commingled. Um, so Sarah has done the research on this. Would you like to take that? Oh, my well, I just wanted to give a little background because because there was when Amherst met uh, a few weeks ago, we discussed these as as our second read, but there was confusion about, you know, oh, well, did we have our Amherst hats on hats on when we were meeting with the region and just Pelham now has to go through them again. And Jennifer made the very good observation that, well, the policy subcommittee is a subcommittee of the region and it's not necessarily thinking about how these policies might um, work or apply or or you know, in in terms of their application to the elementary districts, so that it would be more efficient, perhaps, <laughs> to either form a new policy committee or reform the existing one to include representatives from all three districts, so the policies from the get-go can be viewed um, through all three lenses. 
Anna? Currently, the committee does actually have members from all three districts, um, but we can also reconstitute the same committee with knowing that you're representing both. Right, because the policy committee right now is William, so as Pelham, and Amherst, and you for the region, and Jennifer could also be for the region. So yes, it works. It works well. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't need new members, um, but I think we would have to redefine it. And then we would have to, I think, consider whether that also replaces the regional policy committee or we still need a separate pol policy committee just for the region. I don't know why we would, but. Okay. Um, my thinking looking at our policies our subcommittees rather is, I think we could update the charge to be specific in its, oh, I lost it, uh, mem in its membership. Um, hold on, I'm just trying to pull up our, our subcommittee list quickly so I can look at it. Um, so, yes, I think we probably can redefine it to have membership from at least one, it's a, you know, at least one person from each, an Amherst person, a, lever, a, a region person, and a Pelham person, and then wherever the other person comes from. Yep, Jennifer? So, um... So first, I think my, the, the, I, my thought was, and what I th where I thought we were going was that there was going to be one subcommittee that was a joint subcommittee of all three school committees. So all three school committees would need to, but however it works, appoint or approve the, the subcommittee. So the subcommittee would be, as I just said, a subcommittee of all three school committees. And I think we should form, like, it's great that right now the membership works out but I think we should formalize it to your point, Sarah Bess. My thinking is that there would be two members from the region, one from Amherst and one from Pelham. And there could be overlap or there could not be overlap. But but I think a four person subcommittee makes sense, two from the region, one from Amherst and one from Pelham. And that way the Amherst, the person who is deemed, who's designated the Amherst rep can report back to the Amherst school committee. The person who's deemed the Pelham rep will report back to the Pelham school committee. And then the two region person report back to the regional school, school committee. Uh, Sarah? Yeah, I have proposed motion language. I don't know if you saw it, but I can I can read it. We can move it, second it, and then then debate it and alter it if necessary, because I, I agree it needs, oh, well. So I move to form a joint policy subcommittee of members from the regional Pelham and Amherst school committees for the purpose of modifying or proposing policies that will apply to all districts. The joint committee shall include, and this is debatable, but this is what I wrote, two members from the region, two from Amherst, and one from Pelham. Thank you, Irv. Okay, I think Anna. I, I would propose an amendment to two members from the region, one member from Amherst, and one member from Pelham. My thinking was just to make an odd number because that's, but I don't feel strongly about it. I don't care. <laughs> I think, Deb, did you have your hand up? I just wanted to know if, when we would dissolve the existing policy subcommittee, would we do that first or afterwards? Uh, second. Okay. Uh, Bridget? I just would, um go forward with what Anna said out of the concern that five members then could that be a quorum of, quorum of the region? I would say no, because each person will be designated to represent a particular school committee. <laughs> uh, Jennifer. I, I think there's, even if there could be, 
I think I think it's a I think quorum is a problem. If there are five members and all five are members of the regional school committee, that does constitute a quorum of the regional school committee. So I think four is fine. From my experience, having an even number of people on subcommittees is not a problem. We, we've been a four member committee for a while and it hasn't been a problem. So I also I also agree with the two from the region, one from Amherst and one from Pelham. Um, so I would support the friendly amendment. I accept the friendly amendment. Uh, William? I was just gonna agree that I think it should be four and it's hard enough to coordinate four schedules. <laughs> <laughs> also true. <laughs> and, and we don't really vote on anything. We have conversations, so we don't really need like a tiebreaker or anything. Right, especially as a subcommittee, you really can't. Well, just for attendance. Okay, uh, so your all right. amended motion. Want me to read it again? Yes. Sure. To form a joint policy subcommittee of members from the regional Pelham and Amherst school committees for the purpose of modifying or proposing policies that will apply to all districts, the joint committee or subcommittee shall include two members from the region, one from Amherst and one from Pelham. Okay, uh, William. Just a quick question. Um, if the policies only deal with the region, can that team still deal with that? Because that amendment sounds like it's only for policies that deal with all three districts. I just want to make sure that we can deal with regional policies or Amherst policies or Pelham policies or all three, but that gives the flexibility for us to do everything. I believe it does. Sarah? Um, well, as I raised earlier, we could can the region could continue to have its own policy committee that is only for regional matters. But this this committee that we're joint committee, um, I mean, it's for policies that affect all three districts. If there's a policy uh, that affects only Amherst, this committee, subcommittee would not deal with it. The Amherst School Committee would develop or modify its own policies and similarly for Pelham. I think this is just a redefinition of the current policy committee the, of the region to include the fact that it could be a joint or overarching committee. I think forming another committee in addition or you know having two redundant committees wouldn't doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Any further discussion? I, I guess my well, I'm sorry. I guess my question would be that if the person who Sarah that put the table on or put the motion on the table, her understanding would be that it would be two separate committees. I want to make sure we clarify that before we vote on that. No, I just raised that as an issue we need to settle. I'm not, I don't think we need to have two, but that's this regional committee's choice. Uh, Jennifer? That makes sense to me. Tillman? And what happens if there is a policy that only applies to the region? Who's developing that? The two people that are on that newly formed committee? Well, is I think that's part of why I was thinking rather than specific, like if we designate within the current subcommittee to have a Amherst person, a Pelham person and two region people, then it should cover all of it. Yes, there'll be at least three members of the region. For example, if Margaret were the Pelham representative, then the other three would all be also serve on the region. Yeah. Okay, so 
to clarify, so we are all on the same page, that we will have a new joint subcommittee that the region will designate two people to go. Amherst will designate one person to go. Pelham will designate one person to go. And together they will work on policies that affect all three districts. And that's it. <laughs> or, the, or the region? Yes, I think. Yes, because there'll still be, yes. it's still a subcommittee. Is that right? Yep, go ahead. It could be, but <laughs> for instance, Margaret is not on the region. So if we, as Pelham, nominated Margaret to be on the policy, she wouldn't be on the region of those four individuals doing policy. So I do think we have to clarify, like, do we, does the region appoint, not the region appoint, but does the region give authority for whoever is sitting on that to form district policies for the region? Because someone might not be of the region because they could just be from Pelham. <laughs> Dr. Z, yes. All right, so currently on the committee, the policy committee, William, you serve as Pelham and the region, correct? You, you would serve on the new committee as Pelham and the region, correct? Okay, Jennifer, you are on the policy committee, right? You could serve as Amherst and the region, right. correct? Right. Okay, who else is on the committee? Deb, you are on the committee. You can serve as Amherst and the region or as just the region, correct? And then we would appoint one more person to the committee Oh, there we go. We have our four, our person. Okay. So what would end up happening is when there is a, a K-6 policy, then you would say we are wearing our Amherst hats, our Pelham hat, and we would have our region representative. You would sit in as your region rep. When you are going with a regional then the Amherst person would step back and say, I am not on the region. Like, I think that is one of a suggestion in terms of when you read the policy, what lens you look through versus creating a whole new situation where you're adding another person. That's my humble suggestion. It's the lens. I think when in the Amherst meeting, Jennifer's concern was, sorry, I'm speaking for you, but my understanding of your concern was that what hat am I wearing when I read these policies? When I'm sitting to develop the policies, what hat do I wear? So I think that the intent of the meeting when it is set needs to be clear. We are reviewing these policies through a K-6 lens, advertise, put it in public notice as such, K-6 read of bullying. How does this apply to K-6? Then you say 712 reading of bullying. How does it apply to 712? That way, when the whole thing is written, you can say Amherst, Pelham, region, reviewed. Uh, Tillman. I think it's problematic to have people with dual roles or dual allegiances on one committee. I think it needs to be clear what they're representing. And I can envision there could be a policy that where people from the region may have a different opinion than people who represent Amherst. I don't, I can't come up with an example, but I think the topic of the policy alone doesn't dissolve that conflict. Therefore, I would prefer if you could come up with a solution where it's clear from the beginning who represents what body. And even if they're short staffed and there's only one or two people, that's fine with me in terms of making the policy proposal since they're getting voted for by the entire um, committee, but I, I'm i not quite comfortable with that ambiguous um, de declaration of who is representing which committee. Yeah, I, um, responding to Tillman, I, the, the point of this is to make sure that 
that there are members of the committee who can, can use an elementary school lens, but I don't know why they should be limited to that. I, I mean, presumably if there is some like, well, well, from the elementary view, I see X, but thinking about it from the region, I see Y that those, if there is such a conflict that it would be floated. I'm trying to figure out what problem we're trying to solve. It seems to me that generally speaking, the policy committee as it sits now reviews policy and makes recommendations and each of the boards, each of the school committees discusses them and then sends it back to the school, the, the policy committee. And it's not problematic the way it functions now. So I don't understand what the problem is if we just defined it as a joint committee and continued the way it is currently functioning. Uh, Bridget? I just wanted to say, um, I, I think I agree. I don't think that there's a problem with um, with the committee being on the region and also speaking for the elementary, especially if you're a member of both boards. So what I would say is maybe we change the language as a friendly amendment to say, consisting of four regional school committees to include reps, to include at least one rep from the Amherst School Committee and one from the Pelham School Committee. That way each could be represented at the meeting. I th yes, I think an issue is that if, um... If the committee is, if anybody on the committee is going to be um, acting as a Amherst School Committee member, I won't speak for Pelham, that the public ought to know that an elementary school policy, a policy that applies to the elementary schools is under review. And since it's a regional com committee, it is only posted to board docs and not to the town of Amherst site so maybe the public would like to know that we're looking at uh the anti-bullying policy from a um elementary lens i was going to say one i can just make sure we post on all three uh, both mm -hmm. all three places of the town and the region if we move forward with this and the other thing is through my quick lens of looking through policy, there's only one policy that is specific to Pelham, and there are no policies that are specific to Amherst elementaries. So while we have lots of policies that affect all three districts, we have none currently that I'm aware of that affects just Amherst elementary, and we have only one that affects Pelham that we're actually trying to dissolve shortly. <laughs> and nothing can be done as a subcommittee anyway, so we still have to bring it to each committee to read and talk, discuss, and so nothing would be done for Amherst, nothing would be done for Pelham except for a conversation about what we're proposing, and then it would go back to each district and be voted on. Jennifer? I just wanted to respond to Tillman's thought that it would be a problem to wear multiple hats. I don't actually see it as a problem or a conflict mm -hmm. for someone to wear multiple hats on a committee. Um, I just, I just, I just don't see it as I. I don't think that there would be anything that with the elementary would conflict with the with the region. That being said, I do think it makes sense, and I think each of the three committees should formally appoint members from their committee to be on the subcommittee. And I, my understanding is that the chair of the school committee appoints people to be on subcommittees. So if we could do that tonight, that would be, that would be great. Um, uh, but as for what problem are we trying to solve? So I think it's less about having representation. Well, it is about having representation on the committee, but it's more about making the subcommittee officially associated with each of the three committees as it, it, because in my experience on this on the Amherst and the regional subcommittee you know we have this policy subcommittee that's a subcommittee of the region and I've asked what about Amherst does Amherst have policies and does Amherst approve these policies and I've in my three years have received differing answers as to uh, as to that question one example is the policy subcommittee rewrote the 
public comment policy for meetings, the, the, you know, the subcommittee of the region rewrote that policy and then Amherst just implemented it without actually the Amherst subcommittee itself saying, okay, we're gonna accept this policy as well. That's just one example. So that's why my thought was that the policy subcommittee needs to officially be associated with all three subcommittees. Um, so I think, uh, I think well, I, I was gonna say what William said, which is that I don't think we have any elementary only or regional only policies right now. I think if we ever did need an elementary only policy, I actually think that Amherst or Pelham subcommittees subcommittee should discuss how are we going to write this policy and figure that out and not not necessarily have it default to this subcommittee because we don't really have a process we, we don't we've never really done it so I think we should if if, if that comes up I think the elementary subcommittees the elementary school committees should figure it out and as for maybe the public would like to know about a policy that's affecting elementary. It's not maybe the public would like to know, it's that we are obligated to inform the public. Um, the, all that being said, the subcommittee doesn't approve policies. The subcommittee, as someone just said, subcommittee proposes changes, proposes new policies, and then the, the bigger committees approve them. So I think that the motion as it stands is fine. The motion, the um, amended motion is fine and I will be voting in favor of it. I will say from my own experience, at one time we wrote the one tell them only policy. And no, I did. I, I will take it. Yeah, I was there. Um, and just two of us from Pelham worked on it. So I think if there happens to be a time where there is a elementary only, a need for an elementary only policy, then that so that committee can create its own sub subcommittee for that that time. Okay, uh, er. it, it was really clear at least to me that we obviously have a policy. The policy has to be something that can, uh, on a lot of different levels, be generalizable across the districts. Otherwise, you've got chaotic situations. Second, whatever policies are approved by this joint policy committee has to be approved by the individual, i.e., including Amherst. Amherst can say, hey, this applies to us, we think it's great, or if you're going to make this apply to us, we would suggest doing the following and making these uh, changes. Uh, Anna? Was your hand not up? <laughs> so one I was wondering if we even need to vote on this or if we can just amend the charter instead of creating a subcommittee we can just amend the charter of the committee to say will the the policy subcommittee will be responsible for creating policies that apply to the districts overall and the, it will consist of four members of the region, one of whom is from Pelham and one of whom is from Amherst? Or I think the committees have to approve that. The region can't just command the participation of someone from an elementary school district. Uh, I just wanna put my word in for making this a formal, to formalize this because there are so many things that we don't have processes for. I mean, everybody sort of knows what they are, but we don't have things written down. And I just think this is really important. Okay, so we still have a motion on the table. Can you read the motion? I'm sorry, Sarah, read the motion as it stands. No so problem. We we're nope. on. No problem. To form a joint policy committee or subcommittee, I don't, I don't know which it is. I'll call it committee of members from the regional Pelham and Amherst school committees for the purpose of modifying or proposing policies that will apply to all districts. The joint committee shall include two members from the region, one from Amherst and one from Pelham. Just one friendly amendment that I think you missed out was that um, 
it was four regional members, including one from Pelham and one from Amherst. So then that erases no. the possibility of a Pelham person not being on the region. But why would we want to prohibit <laughs> Margaret from participating? I did. I don't. I didn't hear that as an amendment. I, it's for. I'm sorry. I did propose it as a friendly amendment just to try and not to leave Margaret out at all, but to just to pro sort of clean up the question of the multiple hats because the people present would be people who already wore both hats. I don't think I want to accept that one. Sorry. <laughs> Margaret? Um, I would just say that that would preclude somebody else from Pelham from being on the committee means they could not be. You have a point of order? Yes. Which is? Can we, we've, we've gone around this a couple of times. We put back on the floor the motion that you can properly discuss. And yet we keep having suggestions for a possible amendment. Now it seems to me that we either dispose of this motion and come back with another one before otherwise we're going to keep going around just the rest of the night Do we have that was a question if the amendment was a uh, friendly amendment was included and it was just the answer was no okay are we ready to vote on this all those in favor of voting the yes i do <laughs> forming a joint policy committee of members from the regional Pelham and Amherst school committees for the purpose of modifying or proposing policies that will apply to all districts. The joint committee shall include two members from the region, one from Amherst and one from Pelham. Okay, it has moved and or seconded it. That is how we're finally voting. All right, all those in favor Passes for the region. Do you want to move that for? Um, I will move that Pelham pass. Uh, you could say I move the same. that Pelham moved to form a po joint policy subcommittee of members from the regional Pelham and Amherst school committees for the purpose of modifying or proposing policies that will apply to all districts. The joint committee shall include two members from the region, one from Amherst and one from Pelham. I second. It's unanimous for Pelham. And for the Amherst School Committee, I move the same. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, raise your hand. It is unanimous. Excellent. Do you want to take care of the appointments also? Yes. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's one, two, three, four, correct? Okay. So for the region? Might I suggest you allow Amherst to appoint their members first? Absolutely, yes, thank you very much. Amherst, oh, I will defer. I will defer to Pella. <laughs> um, so do I make a, uh, I- Point. I a point. will a point. appoint- You have that power. William Hunter <laughs> to the new policy subcommittee. I accept. And for Amherst, before I appoint, I will just ask Jennifer and Deb if they have any preference they care to represent Amherst as opposed to the region. <laughs> Not seeing any, all right. I will appoint Jennifer to be the Amherst. I accept. Rep. Thank you. So, I, as the region, point to Deb, right? Because Amherst took Jennifer, so I'm taking Deb and Anna. <laughs> 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 I 
All like right. That. Tell me. What is the name of this new committee? I've heard, I think, three variations. It is the Joint Policy Committee. Thank you. To, okay. Just to be clear, I think it needs to be a subcommittee because the subcommittees have specific uh, legal stuff. responsibilities. Yeah. Joint Policy Subcommittee. Okay. One, one more. Yes, Tillman. Should we then disband the policy subcommittee of the regional school district? I believe so. I move that we disband the policy subcommittee. Second. All in favor of disbanding the policy subcommittee current. Okay, perfect. I, it is unanimous. I will take care of updating the committee thing, Google Drive doc. Um, okay. Thank you all. That was a lot to muddle through. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so next up is uh, the creation of a payroll account for multi-district employees. Uh, so, last page. Do you want to start with how we got to this, and then I can? Sure. Um. So upon walking in and reviewing a lot of the budget practices that we have, one of the things that I quickly learned being an employee was that if you are a employee of multiple districts, you receive multiple paychecks, um, which means that your salary is rated split. Um, I think it's 54, 48, 6, 40, 40, somewhere around there. And so um, 50, 50, 50, it's, it's split. And so what ends up happening is you have to do a tax adjustment to your paycheck. Um, there's different things that come up in terms of personal issues because it technically looks at your one salary is multiple salaries. Um, as the employer, we are not actually doing right by our employees. Um, and so there are other things that came forth in this discovery that's a little long to talk about this evening. Um, one of the things that we thought about and we worked through legal was to research and see outside of regionalizing, which we're not doing, what is the best way that we can work towards making it a lot easier financially? Um, it is a couple of recommendations that we've had about our, over the year, our outside, um, our auditors, once they did it, they also had recommendations for, for the district as to how to address a lot of the salary issues with those committee action members. So what we're asking is that individuals who work for multiple districts, and I'm not just saying committee action, because there are actually other individuals who work, for example, I might have an employee who works for Amherst and Pelham or I have an employee that works for Amherst in the region or Pelham in the region. And so to assist those employees, what we are doing and to assist the district in adequately fixing our financial practices, we are asking that each of the committees um, agree to warrant their portion of the payroll for employees that, that have served multiple districts into a fourth account and that fourth account would then be like the multiple district payroll account and individuals would be paid. So that's one of our first steps in trying to clear up our financial practices and payroll issues that we are facing. Um, the thing is, is that one of the governing bodies have to agree to um, oversee or issue out of that account, uh, create, be the holder of the account. And so the recommendation would be that since the region actually pays the larger portion and has the larger amount of um, employees, like everybody kind of works for a smaller district and a region, that, <laughs> that the committees would all agree 
to what including the region would all agree to the creation of this fourth account and to warrant the payroll into this fourth account and then the region would then warrant and pay out payroll sorry william <laughs> uh so yes that was the moral of the story i had a conversation with um mark terry about how to organize this um and his suggestion is for us to vote to authorize his his language it came to authorize transfer of funds for a combined payroll account to be administered by the region for employees who work across multiple districts um anna so moved <laughs> would you repeat the motion please i move to authorize a transfer of funds for combined payroll account to be administered by the region for employees who work across multiple districts. Second. Uh, Jennifer. So this is a great idea. Um, I didn't realize that, that people got three paychecks and that, that sounds really confusing with tax withholding and all that. Um, so you got this recommendation from legal. So did Mark mention other how other districts that have multi-district employees, do they do something similar to this? So I actually went to legal and say, this is what I want to do. Can you tell me how to make it happen? <laughs> um, and so um, he came back, um, I think through consultation with um, some of his partners who work with other districts, this was one of the, the best ways outside of regionalizing that came up. Any further discussion, M Margaret? Just a question. Um, so that means when we we get the warrants for payroll, we'll now get two warrants. We'll get one for multi-district. If, if in Pelham we have somebody, well, you, who works for Pelham and the others, we will get a warrant just for those people, and then we'll get a separate warrant for the rest of the salaries for the particular district. Do I understand that? I think you would get one warrant because um, you would warrant out. So when you warrant for payroll, you would have a lump sum that would be warranting in that payroll to the larger account. So it would be... It would, so, my, oh, sorry, oh, so all the payroll would go into that other account? For the multi-district employees. That's... So, Okay. So I guess that would be like a line item that's going, that that one check, go ahead, William, I think you got this. I was just going to say, so for Pelham, for Dr. Z, it would be in our warrant that there was money going into the fourth fund. Yeah. And then I believe what Dr. Z was saying is that the warrant for the regions would now, they already include Dr. Z's payment, but they're going to include the payment that was put into the fourth fund from Amherst and from Pelham. And so the regional warrants would have 100% of Dr. Z's payment on there, but would also show the outgoing from Amherst and the outgoing from Pelham. Is that correct? Two warrants, right? So I the fourth account is separate from the region. Like the region is warranting into the account. Pelham is warranting into the account. Amherst is warranting into the account. So the region is war warranting their 54%. Um, then Pelham is putting their 6%. And then we're putting in our, and then Amherst is putting their percent. And, but the region, because one governing body has to be the manager. So if not the region, Pelham could be the governing body of this fourth account. Um, Amherst could be the governing, that you also have to decide who's going to, Govern the account tonight as well, but then that person would then pay out to the the multi district employees. Sarah, did you have a question? I think maybe you just answered it. So, so if the region holds that account or is the manager, or whatever holder, so then it's the regional committee member who authorizes warrants who will then authorize that warrant as well as the other um, payroll. Yeah, okay. But Pelham will still have its own warrants for its Pelham-only employees. Yeah. And money into the... Yes. 
Okay. Ready to vote for the region? Do you have a question? I, I just want to say to anybody watching, this is totally cost neutral. This has nothing to do with spending more. No, no, no. no, no. I, yeah. I just want to be clear yeah. in case somebody sees that yeah. this is this, just This process. does not cost us more money to do this. Uh, okay, Anna. Just to clarify, we only have to do one warrant transfer into the account for the entire year and then every month that account can pay out the money or we every month the region has to warrant in money and then the region has to manage the warrant out. Okay. Yes. I was only going to suggest that and I don't I have no bearing in this, but Pelham, we all sign our warrants so we don't have to read them at our meetings, which is really <laughs> nice. Um, so it would be a lot more warrants to maybe have to read at the regional meeting, but I don't know. Okay, I think we're ready to vote at the region. All those in favor, I can, do you want me to read it one more time? We're good to go. All right, all those in favor at the region. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, excellent. Passes unanimously. Um, I move that we adopt the same process for multidisciplinary payroll. I second the motion to as the previous motion was. <laughs> All those in favor? Passes in Pelham. I move, Sarah Bess, your cue. Would you read it? Oh, yes. Just, yep. Uh, authorize the transfer of funds for a combined payroll account to be administered by the region for employees who work across multiple districts. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All in favor for Amherst? Unanimous. Thank you. Okie dokie. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move to adjourn the Pelham School Committee. Just going to say, don't we have to decide who's going to sign the fourth warrants before we finalize our meetings? I think it's in there. Uh, to be administered by the region. Um, Sorry. No. So you. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, I second. <laughs> thank you. We have a second. It's in favor. I move to adjourn the Amherst School Committee. Second. Thank you. All in favor? It's unanimous. We're adjourned. Okie dokie. On to just our region only topics. I did not receive any public comment. Uh, written, oh, yeah, Irv? Um, uh, point of order. And, and, and I, I'm going to make a suggestion to the chair that we look at those items that we can prioritize that need to be done tonight. And the only reason I'm saying that is that uh, at nine o'clock there is a historic uh, <laughs> debate going on, and I believe that we should have uh, adjourned before uh, you know at least by eight thirty eight four o'clock. So if you can rearrange some of those things that need to be actually done tonight, that would help a great deal. Thank you. Uh, I, I think we should probably be able to get through these pretty quickly. Um, so we have not received any public comment. There's that. Chair's update. I don't have one. Any school committee announcements or subcommittee updates, Sarah? Um, on behalf of the budget and audit subcommittee, I can report that I, Dr. Z and I had a very good conversation yesterday about the budget situation and the recent history and concerns um, that the regional committee has. And I look forward to um, hearing more from her over the next few months and week, weeks and months. Thank you. Any further updates? Anna? 
Can I just make a, a statement saying uh, there was a recent announcement that there's a pertussis case in the high school. And I would just like to remind the community um, that vaccinations are really important, that if you have not vaccinated your child yet, you should do so and make sure that they are fully up to date on all our childhood vaccinations, unless you have a medical exemption or some other kind of an exemption. Um, it's really important. It protects both your child and all of the kids around your children. And um, as a public health professional, I highly support getting your kid vaccinated. And if you are not vaccinated, maybe you want to get it, get vaccinated too. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Anna. Um, okay. So next up is approval of minutes and I know I bombarded you with a boatload of them um, because so I went through uh, to find all of the meetings from this calendar year that we had not yet approved which I realized that I I sent a few that had actually been approved so I apologize uh, Sarah brought that to my attention um, so that being said for our first we can go through if there are any uh, amendments. Sorry, we're taking them in order. This is. Yep. So January twenty third. Do we need a motion first? I believe it says at the end it was approved on February sixth. I didn't watch the meeting of February 6th to make sure that's correct, but it says so at the end. Let me, I have a list of all of them that I went through again. Yes, so uh, the ones that have previously been approved are January 23rd, April 24th, and April 29th. Um, were included in this one, but should not have been. Because they were previously approved. So I apologize for sending you bonus reading material. Uh, Sarah? Maybe I can shorten this even further because I watched the meeting, the May 14th meeting, sorry, uh, April 30th meeting. The, the region discussed and approved a whole bunch of minutes. It's just that the edits were never made and the minutes were never posted. And this applies to April minutes of April. And these, I think, were all joint with Union 26. April 10th, April 19th, the 23rd, the 24th, the 25th, and 29th. So I did watch the video. <laughs> we talked about all of them. I've made notes of what the amendments are. They were minor. It was like somebody's on Union 26 and it was wrong and Deb's name was misspelled. So I'd be happy just to make those changes and post them. I, okay. I don't think those, I don't think those minutes were included on the list I shared. Okay. Because I did, Good. I tried to do the same thing. I okay. went through and like, I, I have it color coded. So the 20 list of four, sorry of what's been approved. So I can just give you the highlights of the ones, what I have found so far. There are no minutes for January 9th. Uh, 123 was approved on 26. 26 was approved on 326. 227 was approved on 312. 36 was approved on 312. 312 was approved on 326. March 14th is up for approval tonight. Uh, March 26th was approved on April 9th. April 9th is in the list. The 10th, the 19th, and the 23rd were, of April were all approved on April 30th. And then Sarah also found that April 24th and April 29th were approved on April 30th. And then April 23rd, 5th, 30th, May 3rd are up for approval tonight. There are no May 14th, May 17th, May 28th meeting minutes. Uh, 6 11 is in there for approval tonight. Uh, June 25th 
does not have minutes. July 23rd, uh, I think will be for next time. And 8-2 is on there for tonight. So, are there, yes, Jennifer. Uh, I didn't, I didn't take notes on any of that. Yes, so sorry. I suggest that maybe you tell us we, we go through these one by one. You tell us which one we're going through and then maybe just like you motion, I'll second and we'll just go through them really Perfect. quickly. How about March 14th? I move to approve the minutes. Second. Ooh, quick on the draw there, Anna. Any <laughs> updates or amendments? I can add that we adjourned at nine o'clock. I mean, if we need, I don't think it, said anything about adjourning it, so it's on the second page then it's a printer problem i'm sorry any further edits all those in favor of approving march 14th thank you all right how about april 9th i move second. to approve the minutes of april 9th I found them really incomplete, I'm sorry. Like there's no description of the morning movement and mentoring program presentation, right? Unless somehow I'm looking to different set of minutes. <laughs> and it was wonderful and it was so, uh, I could suggest some language towards the end, it gets very sketchy and incomplete. I just also noticed that that was the night of the SOA plan and that we we mentioned that um, in the SOA plan that there were, there were many items as part of that plan that were up for budget cuts. And so none of that's discussed here either. Okay. So it sounds like perhaps we need to yeah. I could um, make some changes to this document in a way that's very clear and bring it as a draft for next time, if you like. That would be great. Okay. okay. April 24th. I move to approve the minutes of April 24th. Second. Edit. doesn't have meeting participants. Any further edits? All those in favor of approving April 24th as amended. Okay. April 20th, I move to approve the minutes of April 25th. Second. Uh, Sarah? I think we should correct the spelling of Siomara's name. Right, X-I-O-M-A-R-A, yeah. Any further, Deb? I'm not on Union 26. Okie dokie. Any further amendments? The Bridget is on, was on Union 26. Okay. Any further edits? All those in favor of approving April 25th as amended. April, I move to approve the minutes of April 29th. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Strike that. I move to approve the minutes of April 30th. Second. Is that you, Deb? Uh, any amendments?
this is the meeting where we approve a lot of minutes and that's not represented here. So I could do the same thing or I just think it is I, it's the, the the formatting of the page is such that there's text that goes all the way to the edge of the paper and starts at the edge and I think that didn't get printed on your hard copy. Yeah, I'm happy to believe that's the reason. Okay, yeah. Any further amendments? Any any amendments, I guess. All those in favor of approving April 30th? One, two, three. No. Excellent. Screaming through these. Uh, May, I move to approve the minutes of May 3rd. Any edits? All those in favor of approving May 3rd as presented? Excellent. I move to approve the minutes of April, nope, <laughs> of June 11th. Second. Any edits? Three minor ones, okay. if I may. Yeah. Under goal three, so second page in my printout, goal three, regional agreement needs some tidying. And then on the bottom of my page, three, budget subcommittee strategic planning, um, Bridget's last name is misspelled. It says moved by, should be Heinz. <laughs> and then on the last page, I would just complete the word harassment where it says bully slash. Any further edits? Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes of June 11th as amended? All those opposed? All those abstaining? Yes. Uh, and I move to approve the minutes of uh, August 2nd. Second. Sorry, August what? What date? Oh, I uh, thought I... I wrote it down wrong on my list. Sorry. 27. Any edits? All those in favor of approving August 27th. Perfect. Thank you all for going through all those. Have round two next time. All right. Uh, Warren, sir. I couldn't remember my password, sorry. Oh no. So on 8 28, 2024, I, William Sir, authorized by my signature payables in the amount of $463,552.89. And includes general fund expenses of four hundred twenty-one nine seventy-four and forty-seven cents, revolving fund expenses of six thousand nine hundred two dollars and forty-three cents. My chair just moved. All right, gifts of six forty-six and eighty cents, capital of thirty-three thousand nine hundred twenty-one and nineteen cents, and tellings of one hundred eight dollars. Why 
guys are doing this. I, William Schur, authorized by my signature in the amount of four hundred ninety-seven thousand five hundred sixty-six and fifty-one cents, dated nine four two thousand twenty-four, for payroll. On 9-4-2024, I, William Schur, authorized by my signature, payables in the amount of $806,466.47. It includes general fund expenses of $806,235.47, revolving fund expenses of On 9-6-2024, I, William Schur, authorized by my signature in the payables in the amount of $398,018.41. It includes general fund expenses of $398,18.41. That's all. That's all of them? Is that what you said? Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so next up, we have been gifted a lovely gift. Um, Jennifer. I move to accept the following gift from the class of 1984, number 501, to support $1,800 to be allocated for high school dance studio lighting and $4,000 for new art table, like the tables from the fiscal 24 purchase, any remaining funds to be used for SLR camera for the photography program for a total of $5,800. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Excellent. Thank you so very much to the class of 1984. Yep, Tillman. <laughs> That, <laughs> okay, that's super generous. All right, uh, Jennifer? I move to disband the subcommittee for a new superintendent. I second that. <laughs> All right, I'll give it to Irv. All those in favor of disbanding the subcommittee for a new superintendent, because we're not winning your lead. All in favor? Excellent. Passes with, unanimous. With much thanks. <laughs> All right, excellent. Okay, so next up is a regional representative to the budget coordinating group with the town of Amherst. Uh, Deb brought this to our attention at our last meeting and I had a conversation um, with the town council president earlier this week. Um, and I think this is very important for us as a region to have a separate representative. I know Amherst has their own rep, and I think uh, having a separate regional representative um, is is very important, especially giving up our you know current fiscal conversations that are going to be coming up. I asked how often they met, and it was only two to three times a year, depending on what was needed, um, and my recommendation for this is it to not be an Amherst person. So there's no confusion about which hat you are wearing when you are sitting there. Um, so looking at my friends from my little town, Tillman, I was hoping it would actually be you. Oh, okay. I was going to volunteer, but yes. <laughs> Excellent. Tillman, you are officially blessed to be the region rep to the BCG. Perfect. Can Thank I make you. a comment or say something on the topic? Sure. About, yeah. and maybe Tillman will learn how this works. Um, I don't believe it's a negotiating committee. So is it just going to be an exchange of views or is the town, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, I'm not sure. It, it feels like the, the the messages in the past have been kind of one way, you know, from the town manager to the other, to the departments that are represented there. But I know the region will have its own views about the town's um, 
guidance. So I just, I just, I don't really know what it, it, this is meant to do in, in it because we already have four towns meetings. So I'm just putting that out there. Okay. Uh, so attached to the agenda is the actual committee charge. Um, so I think it's about conversations. And, um, so did you have your hand up? Yeah. So okay. in my finding out about the charter, the charter of the subcommittee and going back a little bit into the history, I think it's an important history to be a part of as a region, but it's also an important history to familiar, familiarize yourself with. So I've got some documents if you're interested in reading them. Yeah. Speaking specifically to Tillman about or? Oh, I think the importance is, is important. I'd like to tell the full committee that it's an important committee and it's important conversation to be a part of. Um, there's some timelines that are very relevant for now, and I'd like to hand the documents over to Tillman, or well, I can spell them out if people want me to, but I don't think so. I would just love to also have copies of the documents you have, and then just to somebody, I think it was Sarah, had said she wasn't sure, but my feeling in the have been as being part of the meetings is that it is a conversation and that there's information that this committee may have that they may not have and that it's important to present there. And also sometimes the flow of information isn't perfect and there's things that just aren't need to be clarified that we can be very helpful with. Good. So I'll give you my documents and you can I can share them out. Yep, absolutely. Earth. This is this is a subcommittee that's really not something that is unequal. The vice chair of that of the BCC happens to be me. And um, those the conversations that go on prior to and during um, the meetings are of critical importance to not only the region but also for uh, the applicant. Uh, and this is not a committee to be taken lightly. Thank you. Okay. Next is our superintendent's update. Where did I go say that? Um, I really wish I was paying attention. Maybe you ready? Oh, it's a long mail. All right, superintendent's update. Um, I really want to make it for the debate. I'm going to say this. Is my clicker on? I'm stealing Sarah Bress's mic because I can't hold the button. Okay. All right. So September 10th, our superintendent's update. And let's take a walk um, through the region with me, Dr. Z. Um, as you can see, we have been doing what's called morning walks. Um, and you're going to see a lot of pictures. And this is just a casual 20-minute um, walk with me and my academic portion of my team. We go through and we really just observe what's happening in classrooms. Um, it helps us to be rejuvenated and remind us of the work that we're doing. And the team so far has really enjoyed the learning walks and walking through teachers and students. Um, we had a great lesson um, at, at some of the schools. So it's really been great, especially at the high school. And I'd be gonna have to click so we can move on. Next slide, all right. So I always wanna remind everyone of our district priorities. Number one, student safety and well-being. Two, healing and stabilization of the district and data and accountability for equity. Move it on over. Um, I'm gonna give some school highlights, so let's click on. Go ahead. All right, so we're gonna talk about, of course, um, 
I will always list everyone. This is going to be one of our standard slides. But as you see, we've pictured of us in the region going through classrooms, as well as addressing our early education center, which I start from the youngest. But this week, we've had great conversations with the middle school um, um, interim principal. We've had really engaging lessons in the high school. And in the top row, uh, middle column, that's us entering the high school. And I want to say, I think that's one. I never get the title correct, but I do know Principal Talib and one of our counselors meet the students every morning as they go in. And there's wonderful music playing to kind of set the tone for the day. So it's, you know, when we get to talking about our learning walks, and I'm going to invite the committee members at different points to join on some of these walks where we get to observe practices, you'll get to see some of the great things that are happening that's happening in schools. Thumbs up, go ahead. Um, so at the regional middle school, uh, we wanted to highlight Robin Clifford's seventh grade social studies class. And again, it's all about choose your distortions. So students work on a challenge of converting round spherical objects into flat maps. So they're ta taking you know that 3D to very 1D. And again, um, it shows the engagement of our students in the classroom from that conceptual to analytical to actual hands-on real world learning that's happening in ARPS. So this week we're highlighting Robin Clifford's seventh grade social studies class in our middle school. Hoo -hoo, middle school, moving on. <laughs> Summit Academy, there's great things happening at the region and we wanted to highlight really um, their student-centered learning experiences that promote critical thinking, problem solving and creativity. Community as a classroom is a way for Summit middle schoolers to connect with the greater Amherst community. Um, thanks to the warden and staff at the election polls, our students were able to take their learning about election live by experiencing the election process in person. Um, and then I also wanna talk about their CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy. A, a therapeutic practice that showcases a strong connection between our thoughts and feelings and behaviors. So a lot of what's happening again in our in our learning settings in terms of shifting what's happening. Some of it is our day school. Um, and so we want to make sure that we show that there's not just the academic portion, but they're also working with that whole child model of developing the social, emotional, and wellness of the students. Sports highlights, sports junkie here. Yes, yes, yes. We're not going to miss it. Um, this week, I will be at the girls' volleyball game on Friday. Um, it allows me to actually, my Friday evening is clear, so I will be supporting our Hurricanes. Um, this is Amherst Nico Lyle. He competed in a dual meet against Northampton last week. Really great. This was shared out with our media um, varsity records as of September 8th, boys um, cross country 1-0, girls cross country 1-0, field hockey 2-0, football. Our first game um, is supposed to be Friday, but we have a little issue, so we're working on that. I will definitely keep everyone um, posted on the football game if it, if it continues. Golf 1-3, boys soccer 0-1-1, girls soccer 2-0. Thank you, Victoria Dawson, our awesome athletics director, keeps us pushing and so the schedule, if you're not up on Arbiter, please be up on Arbiter. And it's really great if you can come out and show your keen support for our JV, middle school, um, and varsity players. Central office highlights. I talked about our good morning walks. Um, and we talk about problems of practice at every SPC, our superintendent's planning council. What we're doing is trying to, at, at this point, have the whole team come together and use our different viewpoints to solve problems of practice in different divisions. Last week, Doreen Reed um, presented a problem of practice in terms of students coming into the district and what it looks like for intensive care. And we were able to walk her through the thought process of different questions to prompt her to start to think differently so we can actually expand on what we're doing. Um, in teaching and learning, thank you, Mary Kiley. We are now in our third year implementation of iReady, but more so I talked about our writing protocol and what's shifting. Um, and we are looking at our middle school math. Um, after an application last winter, we were selected to participate in a virtual math tutoring sponsored by DESI. So as a part of that program, which is free to us, 35 eighth graders who need ex extra support in math will receive 30 minute small group online tutoring sessions per week from a licensed math teacher. 
Um, these sessions will take place during the guided study period and will continue all year. So parents, if you um, please reach out, I think we have a few spots that's available. So reach out to Mary Kylie in, in my office, um, our curriculum and instruction administrator around that opportunity for math school. And then at the region as well, DESI requires a two-year process for new educators of induction and mentoring. So new unit eight educators had an all-day orientation in August. Monthly meetings are about to kick off for our first year and second year cohorts, and all mentors are in place for first year cohorts. I want to finally highlight our BRIGHT program. Um, a BRIGHT program is definitely a program that kicked off, I'm going to say, in fall of 2014. And so just to bring it forward, our new BRIGHT team at Amherst Regional High School, we're excited to introduce a dynamic team. Taking the helm of the BRIGHT program is Haley Grayland and Anthony Pisano, bringing fresh perspective and a wealth of experience to the high school, succeeding Karen and Ahmed, thank you, um, after their years of highly successful program implementation. So we are confident I was able to walk through the BRIGHT program in our morning walk. Um, the BRIGHT space, which is right outside of the classroom, there's actually a courtyard, needed some work, but thank you to our maintenance and facilities department who went out and cleared that area. It's a therapeutic space. And so this is one of the opportunities for us to really shift and change what's happening with our behaviors. Um, so thank you to our BRIGHT staff. We are excited to see what the data holds in terms of shifting behaviors. And thank you to Maureen for heading up this charge. So we have counselors, licensed mental health counselors. Um, Anthony is a student athlete. So we're really, really looking forward to what's happening and what's going to happen when we build and infuse different aspects to kind of shift our students' behaviors. Next slide. The budget process. I believe this is a standing um, update. And so what I want to talk about, it's key, it's critical, and we've delved into it in different aspects. Um, right now, we had a meeting today with Markham, who's coming in to do the internal audit. Um, they're actually sending, they sent the list. Pro the project manager is going to be Nibi from my office. She's going to lead that, that audit into our processes and what's happening with payroll and budget. Um, Everything will be submitted to them uh, by Friday. They want they have an end of day deadline, and then we are going to work towards getting the, that audit up and running and moving towards. So that has already launched today with our kickoff meeting. On the same end, we are preparing for our four towns meeting. Thank you to Sarah Best for assisting me in sending out uh, those invites. So everyone has been inviting September 28th, 9 a.m. in the middle school library. Um, we are the team and I have been working on pitching different scenarios. Um, we've received suggestions from some committee members in their one-on-ones. Thank you guys for that. And what we are, our goal is to, to walk out of there with a likely scenario that we can then complete from. The idea is that by December, we have a draft budget in place that would suggest how we would work. Um, what we are looking at the region budget especially is we are pitching different scenarios in what would this look like minus the 6% plus the 4% in the base without the base. Right now we have six possible scenarios. We're gonna narrow it down to our four main scenarios. We also have projections. If we are to run the scenario, what would that project for the region for the next three to four years? There is one scenario that we found in all of our um, numbering, that if we are to run it, it would actually cut our deficit where we would only incur uh, issue at operational costs. But then if we are able to get the four towns to agree, we would be at a little bit of a surplus the next three years. So um, that's a fingers crossed scenario. I don't have it with me. I, I mean, I have it, but I don't have it. <laughs> Go ahead. It's essential that the public has access to that. I've, I've pestered Sarah Bess about this, but it needs to be live streamed and recorded. The, the four towns. The four towns, please. okay. Um, we can talk about that afterwards. Yeah. I'm just saying it in public because I think it's important for the public to be informed. Right. So what we did speak about, um, even so after the four towns, and when I say we, there's a lot of times I'm sitting down in my office and I'm speaking to different people and pitching ideas out, was that if that's not one way, we actually then host different forums to talk about where the scenarios are, what they would be, so that we can actually start to get the um, 
narrative out. I think one of the critical things at that point would also be possibly using the podcast, creating, um, and Seth has all this wonderful stuff, green screens and things. So taking that opportunity to actually record it and actually then run it repeatedly for everyone to see, but we need to be able to, to share that out, yes. So um, in addition to this public body, there are the finance committees yep. and, and select board and the town council. And I believe the public should have access to those meetings with that lens as well. Okay. I'll do my best. I would just, um, just, I guess, basically double up. I've already had requests from the public who are asking me if it's going to be hybrid, if there's ways that they can attend, et cetera. I think that one thing, just considering sort of the the dynamics of it, is that there, the decisions can be made are being made in several places, and that all the places that are making decisions need to be um, able to access the voice of the public and have that be made so that when the cuts are made, or if cuts are made, that this body doesn't take all the heat, but many people involved in the decision-making process are um, hearing from the public as well. So one of the key things, maybe check your phone. One of the key things that um, I want to say is that this year in our planning, what we've worked on is we've actually created a, a, a template, a master sheet um, that we're gonna have the schools, everyone sit and plan from. It's very critical, and Sarah Marshall and I had this conversation, it's very critical that we start to not talk um, budget speak for everyone. We speak not just FTEs, but we speak positions, people, um, because FTE doesn't equate to people. And then we're asked the questions, who are the people that were cut? We need to now speak and say, when you're asking me to cut $600,000 or you're asking me to cut 1.3 million or 2 million, it is actually a person, it is a live body. And this is the number of English positions that we would have to cut. This is the number of clerical that we would have to cut. This is a number, and, these, and then we can clearly say it. And I think that's where the confusion lies as well. Um, so we are working on, clearly line iteming the budget where we are now putting in names next to numbers. So you'd be able to see by the end of this, pro not by four the four towns, but by the end of the process, specifically who, because it's easy to say cut a million, but when we start to speak to the, the impact that it's going to have to student learning and what that looks like, that's the picture we have to present. We also have to present the true data of where we are versus where we need to be and where we want to go to, because we're going to look at in that meeting, the trends in terms of our student population versus our teacher population versus our paraeducator population. Where are those shifts um, happening? We've always, based on what I've looked like, only had one principal. So I'm not going to look at the principal population, but I am going to look at the, the most impactful body and in any budget, 80% of a budget, school budget is personnel. But I think that the way how we have split it out currently in our planning, and, and that's one of the things that we're gonna show is we I want to present the personnel cost and the operational cost, what is considered a personnel cost, what is considered an operational cost. And then right now what we're looking at and what we've seen as a team is that the largest bulk of that cost is at the high school. So the high school actually is the largest part of the region's budget. Um, and that is both operationally as well as salary. Um, well, no, operationally, it actually is the central office due to transportation, sorry. So transportation operationally is the largest part, but then when we look at personnel, the largest part is the high school. And so there's different conversations that we would have to have and scenarios, but. Once we decide on the scenario and we get the four towns to kind of come in and engage in that conversation and we're able to plan from a specific scenario, then we can then come into the process of saying this is what would be the most impacted at the region. Um, as always, thank you very much for your input. We have our survey and we will continue to share our community survey. And that is it for the superintendent's update. I have a question, but also there was a track update slide. Was Is there an update on the track project? Not at this time. 
Okay. So I, I have a question I want to ask about new positions in the central office. So I know that there are some new people in new positions currently, and I've also seen on School Spring that there are a few new positions posted. Um, and given that, you know, in the spring, we, uh, this committee approved a budget for fiscal, for this fiscal year that included cuts to FTEs in the central office. So I want to ask if the new positions that are filled and are being filled, are, are those going to result in an increase in the line item for the central office staff? The initial conversation I had when I came in um, with the finance director was that there were some critical positions that needed to be filled. I asked for what was allowed, like what was a range of funding that would be available. I was given a range and so I've worked within that range. What I've also done, and I think I explained this earlier when um, Sarah Marshall asked the question, is some of the positions are being repurposed um, because we have individuals who are doing the same things or individuals whose strengths lie in someplace else. And so in an opportunity not to impact the budget, taking certain positions that are currently present and repurposing them, um, shifting what they're doing so that what the need of the district is can be met through the same individual. But one of the critical things that I heard when I came into this position was there were concerns around our hiring practices and the transparency of our hiring practices. And so any position that I have um, decided to fill, I have advertised because I am not hiding anything. What? I'm sorry. I'm not hiding anything. Hiding. Mm -hmm. Will we see the, the scenarios that you're going to present for the four towns meeting at the regional school committee meeting the Tuesday before? Is that the request to do that? I would like to kindly request that we get to see even if it's not a perfect presentation, but to get the numbers that you will present at the four towns meeting so that we can think about them and help defend the numbers when the towns descend upon us. Sure thing. Not about that. I did have another budget question, but that's for agenda planning. Okay. <clears throat> Any further superintendent updates? Okay, future agenda planning. Did you have a question, Deb? I have several. Can we have an update on the track and field project? Also, I believe there are as yet two final budgets that we haven't seen. There was a 6% that we voted, but we never saw a final budget book on that for FY25. And then there's an updated one based on the state disbursements of because they finalized their budget so it'd be great to have a summary of one and the full one of the other thank you anything else Wayne? on this um student handbook is that something that we're supposed to see and look at as a school committee if so could we have that on the agenda Yes, we can have that on the agenda. Anything else? I think it goes along with what Tillman said, but I just think we need time to talk as a committee and think about what we're going to come in with strategically to the four towns meeting. Yeah. Yep. Anything further? If anybody has any ideas. Yep, Sarah? Okay. You can always email me. All right. Jennifer? I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjourning? We are adjourned. Thank you all very much. <laughs>